Hello everyone. For some time, I haven't been entirely happy with my gear selector. A few things do feel off to me, and maybe it's just that I'm not good at shifting, but I think that there can be some worthwhile improvements done to make the experience much better. The first issue I want to take care of is the play when the shifter is in gear. This is enough to throw off a hard 3-2 downshift. Usually, this can be solved by replacing the stretched shifter cables, but in this case, the shifter cables are just fine. You can see here, when in gear, the crossgate selector has some play to it. This is something that is inherent to this type of transmission because the rotating shafts need some play on the inside to not lock up from all the friction. So this can't be solved on the transmission side of things. Although the play in the gear selector is what's preventing proper gear changes, it can still shift well as long as I don't move the gear selector within certain tolerance zones. These are areas where the crossgate shaft interferes with the main shaft in the transmission. So if I make a gated shifter plate, it will allow me to avoid those zones and get a perfect shift every time. This will also prevent any play when the shifter is in gear, will give me a visual of which gear I'm in, will look very cool, and will sound good every time I shift. Before I start to make the shifter plate, I will need to upgrade a few things that are throwing off the precision of the shifter on the shifter side of things, like changing any worn-out components. This needs to be done or the shifter plate won't serve much purpose, and will be the main focus of this video. First thing I'm going to do is remove the center console. I will want to put the shifter plate neatly in the center trim piece, but I can't directly mount it to the plastic as it's flimsy, so I will need to mount it to the base of the shifter while still fitting neatly into the trim. I was not able to find good information about making a precise gated shifter online, so I will try to document my thought process as much as possible on the way. I noticed after filming the movement of my shifter, which I should have realized some time ago, is that it's not really centered. I was thinking that the shifting in general felt a bit off, but I was not able to put my finger on it till now. Because the shift linkage is custom, the cable end had to be moved back a bit relative to the transmission. So the center of the shifter, relative to the center of the trim piece, is actually in gear. It looks like it would be in neutral, but it isn't. I need to fix this for the sake of ergonomics. I am able to reach further forward without a problem, but reaching back, especially at the angle for second gear, puts my wrist at a slightly awkward position. There's two ways to go about this. Either straighten out the main shift rod, which is almost impossible, or move the cable end backwards about an inch. To reposition my neutral, I'll need to use some strong epoxy that can hold the cable back about an inch from the stock support. I remove the left cable holder, which is responsible for the forwards and rearward shifts, and try to reposition it such that both shift travels were at a reasonable distance from my reach. After playing around with it for a bit, I really liked the feel of it when the edge of that bracket happened to be roughly backed up to the edge of the base. Even though this is moved back less than an inch, the shifter has a mechanical advantage to it, which means that the movement translates to the shift knob moving forward about 2 inches. To prepare the cable, I wrap the edge of the rubber on the cable in Teflon tape to avoid having the epoxy stick to it. At this time, I realized that the exact position of the holder was not ideal, as it would have a bend to it when in first and second gear. These are the hardest gears to get into of course, and I don't want there to be extra stress on the cable when not needed, so I used a soldering iron to melt away a bit of the plastic to the left, so that the cable can be positioned to be straight when going into first and second. After positioning and locking in the cable exactly where I needed it, I used some high strength two-part epoxy to make the holder. I am planning for this to be mostly permanent, yet it is possible to remove it later if need be, by using a lot of heat. The cable was covered in two layers, the first one focusing on the forward forces that it will be experiencing, and the second for the rearward forces. This amount of epoxy heats up quickly and may begin to bubble, so I cooled it off with some compressed air and some rubbing alcohol, which seemed to do the trick. This epoxy setup may seem crude, but it is now more than strong enough to handle mischiefs. It is actually even stronger than the nylon material that it is bonded to. The cable is now relocated and neutral is exactly where I want it to be. By now I've driven with this modification and I'm much happier with the downshifts, but I can still do better. When moving the shifter to the right and left endpoints, especially reverse, I noticed that the bushing in the crossgate lever is worn out slightly and moving up and down. This needs to be fixed before I continue to make the shifter plate. Instead of replacing it, I tried this method out. I have some scrap feeler gauges and I found one that can just barely slide into that opening. I then cut out a semicircle of it and pushed it inside. I didn't have the right size to go with a full circle, but this will suffice. I then cut tabs into the ends of the strip and bend them so that it can't slide out. This fixed the up and down plate almost completely, which translates to a few millimeters tolerance of improved precision. Some time later and this hasn't slid out of place, so I'll stick with this fix. 
Last thing to do is to upgrade the bushings holding the shifter base in place. These are made of rubber, but as you can see, they allow for a lot of play when force is applied. It doesn't really interfere with my shifting that much, but it's noticeable when I shift hard, especially when getting into reverse. To get rid of this, I need to replace the rubber bushings with solid ones. There are some that you can order online, but I was able to find a model on Thingiverse, link in the description. One hour later and they are ready to install. Because these are solid, I shouldn't use nearly as much force so that nothing breaks, but that also means that the screw won't have a good bite on the threads. So I'm using a good amount of thread locker and just tightening it by feel. Right away I noticed that the shifter base is pretty much a part of the car now with how solid it is. What I've noticed from driving with this mod is that although it doesn't really improve the shift feel in the middle gears, reverse is much easier to get into as you no longer have to fight the rubber bushings to get it in gear. As for the vibrations, I can't really feel any on the shift knob so it's worth the upgrade. Now that I'm done all that, I can start to make the shifter fork template. To get a rough idea of where it will be positioned, I put the shifter into all the gears and hot glued a frame of these coffee stir sticks to outline the path of the shifter throughout each movement. As I suspected, the movement being that close to the base is not enough to have forks between each gear. The shifter stick overlaps with itself, so I need to put the plate higher up to get the clearance I need with the wider travel. I was planning to only have a flat piece of plastic to cover the hole, but now I need to think in 3D. To do this, I will need to extrude the opening of the console upwards, or rather add an extension piece on top of that hole. This will only serve as a cover to the plate. The actual shift fork plate will be held up with metal rods that are mounted to the base of the shifter, where it is solid. I decided to make a 3D model of the cover. First, I filled in the rounded edges of the center console opening with epoxy and used a flush non-stick plate to get the outline I needed. This was just a piece of plastic with some sticker backing paper glued to it. This area needs to be filled in anyways, and filling it with epoxy now is much easier than designing a 3D model that sits perfectly around those edges. A good amount of sanding was needed to get the epoxy to stick, but in the end I had a very nice leveled surface to work with. I then traced a sketch over the shape and scanned it with my printer. I then traced that with Fusion 360 and scaled the dimensions slightly until it matched the center console's size. I extruded the profile because I want to establish a reference on the center console that I can work around later. The plan is to extrude this profile at the very end, however much is needed, to place the shifter plate at a height that would work. Now I'm putting in four holes to add in brass inserts, which allows me to screw down the model to the console. After confirming a good fit, I need to geolocate the boundaries of the shifter at the point where the shift forks would not interfere. I chose a height that's around that white nylon piece right there, as that's where the shifter stick straightens out. Moving the shifter around to the nearby gears, I see that there was about a half centimeter of space between the gates, which is good enough for the steel forks. The height of that plane, with reference to the center console opening, was about 5 centimeters. I then extruded the model I had created 5 centimeters upwards, as I want to mount the entire piece to the console and map out the exact boundaries of the shifter stick. This will then give me an accurate location of the top opening of the model in reference to the base drawing. I cut out some material on the sides to save on filament and then printed the piece. I mounted it to the center console and got started on referencing the boundary limits. The shape of the shifter plate will be square roughly, so I just have to know four points that represent each of the edges in reference to the model I've printed. So I put the shifter stick at its boundaries and used a ruler to mark the edges of an X intersecting at the shift rod onto the piece. My plan is to scan this shape with my printer, and after connecting the drawn lines together in Fusion 360, I'll get the exact points that I need to map out the edges. Now that my piece is scanned, I connected all the lines together to form the boundaries of the shift forks. From there, I was able to draw the square and move it up to the exact position I needed. Now to the main difficulty of this model. I want to have a somewhat flat angle close to the upper edge of the shifter plate, but I also want the bottom edge to have the same slope as the surrounding center console walls so that it has a nice transition. So I needed to get two pictures of the center console, one from the side and one from the back, so that I can trace the angles and work from there. I will then draw a polyline that has a nice contour to it that blends these two boundaries, and then use that as a guide rail to loft the base of the drawing to the upper square. Lofting just means connecting the edges of two profiles together to make a surface. 
but in Fusion 360, using guide rails allows you to make whatever shape you would like in between those profiles. After some trial and error, I was able to get the rails in place and ready to be lofted. This needed to be drawn over a few times as Fusion 360 has this weird timeline based editing restriction, but I'm getting used to it now. What's left is to loft the profiles with a small thickness for the walls, and then 3D print it and see how it looks. I may end up changing the rail shape to more closely resemble a low-tiff skated shifter with sharper edges on the upper boundary, but that's it for now. If you have any input on what design to make the loft path resemble, please leave me a suggestion in the comments. In the next video, I will 3D print and test out the cover, then work on making and mounting the shifter plate. Till next time.